So, good morning to each and everyone. My topic is all about the introduction to interior design and basic types of design. So, importance of interior design in creating functional and aesthetically pleasing spaces. So, we have six. The number one is enhances functionality. Number two, reflects personal style and identity. Number three, creates aesthetic appeal. Number four, enhances mood and well-being. Number five, supports productivity and efficiency. And number six, impacts health and safety. So, enhances functionality. Interior design focuses on optimizing the functionality of a space. It involves the thoughtful arrangement of furniture, pictures, and accessories to ensure efficient use of space. Through careful planning and consideration of user needs, the interior design improves the flow and organization of a room, making it more practical and user-friendly. Reflects personal style and identity. Interior design allows individuals to express their personal style and, and identity. The choice of colors, materials, patterns, and furnishings in space reflects the preferences and personalities of the occupants. A well-designed space should be, should feel authentic and resonate with those who use it, creating a sense of belonging and comfort. So, number three, create aesthetic appeal. Aesthetics play a vital role in interior design by employing design principles such as balance, harmony, proportion, and contrast. Designers create visually appealing spaces. A thoughtful selection of colors, textures, and decorative elements enhances the overall ambience and visual interest of a room. Aesthetically pleasing spaces have a positive impact on occupants, evo evoking feelings of relaxation, inspiration, and well-being. Number four, enhances mood and well-being. Interior design has a significant imp impact on our emotions and well-being. The use of color psychology, lighting techniques, and special layout can influence mood and create a specific atmosphere. So, for example, warm colors like red and orange can promote energy and excitement, while col cold colors like blue and green can induce a sense of calmness and tranquility. Number five, supports productivity, productivity and efficiency. Well-designed spaces contribute to increase productivity and efficiency. A, thoughtful, a thoughtfully organized workspace with appropriate furniture and equipment can improve focus and concentration. So, proper lighting and acoustics reduce distraction and create a conducive environment, environment for work or study. So, and the last one is impacts health and safety. Interior design also has implication for health and safety. Designers take into account factors such as ergonomics, accessibility, and sustainability. Ergonomically designed furniture and fixtures promote good postures and reduce the risk of injuries. So sustainable design practice, practices focus on selecting eco-friendly materials and incorporating energy-efficient systems promoting a healthier and a greener living environment. So we have the definition and scope of interior design. So we have seven. So number one, residential. Number two, commercial. Number three, hospitality. Number four, healthcare. Number five, educational. Number six, sustainable. And number seven, exhibition and museum design. So, residential design. Residential interior design focuses on creating functional and comfortable living spaces within homes, apartments, and other private residences. It involves designing bedrooms, living rooms, kitchens, bathrooms, and other areas to meet the specific requirements and lifestyles of the resident. 
So residential design is for the uh, private residences that involves the bedrooms, the rooms, living rooms, kitchens, and bathrooms. Number two, commercial design. Commercial interior design involves creating interior spaces for businesses and organizations such as office, offices, retail stores, restaurants, hotels, and healthcare facilities. It aims to optimize functionality, brand identity, and customer experience, while also considering factors like traffic law, accessibility, and compliance with building code. So commercial designs uh, involves uh, and uh, no, it aims to optimize functionality, brand identity, or customer experience for uh, businesses and organizations such as office, the stores, restaurants, and hotels, and also uh, healthcare facilities. So number three, hospitality design. Hospitality interior design focuses on creating appealing and functional spaces, spaces for the hospitality hospitality industry, including hotels, resorts, restaurants, bars, and, and entertainment venues. The design aims to provide a unique and memorable experience for guests, considering factors like ambience, comfort, durability, and guest flow. So, hospitality design uh, suggests that the guests uh, must experience a unique and memorable uh, experience for for this design. So number four, healthcare design. Healthcare interior design specializes in designing medical facilities, clinic, hospitals, and other healthcare environments. It involves creating spaces to promote healing, comfort, and efficiency while considering factors such as infection control, patient safety, accessibility, and specialized equipment requirements. So, healthcare design uh, specializes the medication facilities, clinics, hospitals, and the healthcare environments to, uh, to promote healing and comfort um, and uh, safety for the guests or the occupants. Number five, educational design. Educational interior design focuses on creating engaging and effective learning environments for schools, colle colleges, universities, and other educational institutions. It considers factor, factors like classroom layout, acoustics, lighting, and furniture design to support teaching and learning, learning activities. So educational educational design so basically so learning environments through schools college universities and other educational institutions that made to uh, teach in learning in in learning activities so the last uh, so number six sustainable design sustainable interior design emphasizes the use of eco-friendly materials energy efficient systems and sustainable practices to minimize the environmental impact of interior spaces. It involves incorporating principles of sustainability and resource conservation into the design process. So efficient system and sustainable practices so for the environmental impact of interior spaces uh, that involves the principles of the resource conservation into the design process. So, exhibition and museum design. So, exhibition and museum design involve creating immersive and engaging spaces for showcasing art, artifacts, or interactive exhibit. It requires careful consideration of lighting, display techniques, and spatial layout, and visitor flow to enhance the visitor experience and effectively communicate the intended message so exhibition and museum design uh, basically in the museum design that showcase the art the artifacts the artifacts are in interactive exhibit that display in a techniques or special layout 
to to enhance the experience of the visitors to communicate the intended message for uh, for this uh, design. So let's proceed to the basic types of design commonly used in interior design. So we also have seven. Number one, traditionally design. Contemporary design. Number three, minimalist. Number four, eclectic. Number five, concessional. Number six, industrial. And the last one is the Scandinavian design. So traditional design. Traditional design draws inspiration from classic styles and historical periods. It features elegant and formal elements with a focus of symmetry, ornate detailing, rich colors, and luxurious materials. Traditional interiors often exclude, often include elements such as crown molding, intricate woodwork, the the mass or floral pattern, and Antiquate furniture. So tradi traditional design is also known as uh, uh, styles that are historical in a historical period. That, uh, the, that the elements are formal and elegant, detailing the symmetry and the colors of luxurious materials that um, that design it is. So, number two, contemporary design. Contemporary design, also known as the modern design, is characterized by clean, clean lines, minimalism, and simplicity. It emphasizes functionality and often incorporates open spaces. Neutral color palettes and a mix of materials such as glass, metal, concrete. Contemporary interiors often feature features, sleek furniture, minimal ornamentation, and a sense of spaciousness. So, contemporary design, basically, so, also known as a modern. So, we have the uh, clean lines, minimalism, and simplicity. So, uh, contemporary interior, de interior design also, uh, Often uses a glass, metal, and concrete. So we have number three, minimalist design. So minimalist design embraces simplicity, and the less is more approach. It focuses on a clean lines, a monochromatic or limited color palette, and the elimination of unnecessary clutter. Minimalist interior interiors prioritize open spaces, natural light and functional furniture with, a, with clean and simple forms. This design type emphasizes organizations a sense of calmness. So, specifically minimalist, so minimal the decoration or the design, we have this, uh, the less is more. So, not decorate, uh, decoratively uh, designed. So, number four, eclectic design. Eclectic design is a blend of various design styles, combining elements from different periods, cultures, and aesthetics. It allows for creative expression and personalization by mixing different patterns, textures, and colors. Eclectic interiors often incorporate unique and con unconventional furniture pieces, artwork, and accessories resulting in an uh, individualized and relevant space. So, eclectic designs, design is a blend of various design styles uh, that combines element or different periods or cultures and aesthetics. So, eclectic design of open incorporates unique and unconventional uh, pieces of furniture, artwork, and accessories. Number five, tra transitional design. Transitional design is design combines elements of traditional and contemporary contemporary style. 
creating a balance and harmonious look. It incorporates classic elements with modern touches, resolving in a timeless and comfortable aesthetic. aesthetic. Transitional interiors features a neutral color palette, simple lines, and a mix of traditional and contemporary furniture and accessories. So, transitional design, so the mix of the traditional or the contemporary. So, uh, the contemporary styles has a balanced and a harmonious look that incorporates elements with a modern touches. So, it is timeless and comfortable aesthetic. Six, the industrial design. Industrial design draws inspiration from raw and unfinished elements commonly found in factories and warehouses. It embraces exposed brick walls, metal accent, accents, reclaimed wood, and utilitarian lighting. Industrial interiors often feature open floor plans, high ceilings, and, co and the combination of rough and refined textures creating a rugged and urban aesthetic. So industrial design, uh, so also known as uh, so design that uh, it has the industry. So so unfinished elements commonly found in factories or warehouses. So found in factories and warehouses. So the last one is the Scandinavian design. Scandinavian design originates from Nordic countries and is characterized by simplicity, functionality, and a connection to nature. Emphasizes clean lines, light colors, and the use of natural materials such as wood and leather. Scandinavian interiors often feature minimalistic furniture cozy textiles, ample natural light, and a sense of warmth and serenity. So, Scandinavian design, uh, not literally familiar, but uh, it, uh, it characterizes simplicity also and the functionality to have a connection to nature. So, it also emphasizes clean lines and light colors for natural materials for natural materials so, such as wood and leather. So we have the basic design principles commonly used in interior design. So we have six. We have first one, the balance, the proportion and scale, harmony and unity, contrast, emphasis, routine and reputation. So we have the balance. Uh, balance refers to the distribution of visual weight in a space. It can be achieved through symmetrical or asymmetrical arrangement. So balance uh, achieved through the, uh, the two types, so the symmetrical and the asymmetrical arrangement. So as you can see, from your left side, the formal balance, and from the right side, is the informal balance. So uh, we see the uh, differences between the formal and the informal balance. So the formal balance, we have the equal, the, the equal or the balance of the square or the or the uh, design or the uh, distribution of the weight in a space. So the informal balance, we have the uh, the different one of the boxes that is the informal balance. So number two, proportion and scale. So proportion refers to the size relationship between objects and the overall spaces. Overall space. Scale refers to the relative size of the object within a space. Achieving a proper proportion and scale ensures that objects and elements relate harmoniously to each other and to the space 
and to the space as a whole. So the left picture is the proportion and the left picture is the scale. So proportion is the size uh, between the objects and the overall spaces while the scale is the relative size of the object within the space. So number three, harmony and unity. So harmony and unity create a sense of cohesion, of co cohesion and consistency in a space. Harmony refers to the use of elements that complement and work well together, such as colors, textures, and materials. Unity refers to the repetition or consistent use of certain design elements throughout the space, creating an unified and coherent look. So, as you can see at the picture, so it emphasizes the colors, the textures, and materials. Uh, that is the harmony, so unity uh, throughout a space creating a, a coherent loop. So, proceed to number four contrast. Contrast involves the just opposition of elements with different characteristics, such as color, texture, shape, or size. Contrast adds visual interest, creates uh, focal points, and helps to find a uh, highlight different elements with a space. So contrast involves the color, the text, the texture, shape, or size. So as you can see at the picture, so the the conduct the contrast is the the wall is the light and the floor was dark that is the contrastization or the contrast so emphasis so emphasis also known as focal point refers to that refers to creating a visually dominant element or area that draws attention and becomes the center of interest in space it can be achieved through strategic placement of bold or unique objects, objects accent colors, or, or architectural features. So emphasis, uh, it also draws attention that anyone's, that anyone's interest uh, achieved through the uh, strategic placement, the placement of the design or the bold unique of the objects. Of that design, the colors or the architectural features uh, look like the yeah, the picture. So it is example of the emphasis. So the last one, the written and repetition. So written refers to the visual flow and movement created by the repetition of elements. So, it can be achieved through the repetition of shapes, patterns, and colors, or textures. So, so look at the picture. This is the example of the written repetition. So, the written is the visual flow of movement, movement created by repetition. So, the design uh, repeatedly uh, used by this uh, types of uh, basic types of design the repetition of the shapes the patterns colors or textures so let's proceed to the impact of interior design and personal well-being <laughs> so color psychology colors have the power to evoke specific emotion and moods different colors have different psychological effects on individuals for example, warm colors like red and orange can promote energy, energy stimulation, and excitement. So, if you uh, see the red or orange, uh, you can uh, it it can uh, it can absorb energy or excitement if you saw the 
warm colors like red and orange. Call colors like blue and green can induce a sense of calmness, relaxation, and tranquility. So if you if you are familiar with the call colors like blue and green, so it induces a sense of calmness, relaxation, and tranquility. So neutral colors like white and beige can create a sense of balance and neutrality. So also is uh, also neutral colors is the simplicity that create a sense of balance and neutral. So lighting. Lighting plays a crucial role in interior design and has a direct impact on our mood, productivity, and overall well-being. Proper lighting design considers both natural and, and artificial light sources. So we have the two uh, light sources, so natural light and artificial lighting. So, natural light provides a connection to the outdoors, increases vitamin D production, and contributes to positive mood and overall well-being. So, artificial lighting, when well-designed, can provide appropriate illumination for a specific tasks, enhance ambience, and create a comfortable environment. The intensity, color, temperature, and distribution of the, of the light are key consideration in lighting design. So it is important that the design of the, the, the home or the, the any kind of uh, facilities or buildings, uh, it has also the, the, the sources of light. So we have the natural light or artificial light. So, special layout. The layout arrangement of furniture, objects, and circulation paths within a space significantly impact personal well-being. So, here are, the, here are some considerations. So, functionality, flow and accessibility, personal space. Functionality, an efficient and well-organized layout enhances. Productivity and reduces stress by providing ease of movement of the access to necessary items. So, flow and accessibility. A well-designed space considers accessibility, ensuring that individuals can move around easily with clear pathways and minimal obstruction. Personal space, privacy and personal space with an interior are essential for promoting comfort, relaxation, and sense of security. So, special layout. So it is a wide a space that uh, that that considers the functionality, the flow of accessibility and personal space. So biopemalic design. Biopemalic design is a is an approach that incorporates elements of nature into interior spaces. Exposure to nature has been proven to have numerous benefits on well being including stress reduction, improved cognitive function, and increased productivity. Biopemalic design may involve incorporating natural materials, indoor plants, use of nature, and the use of natural colors and patterns. So biopemalic design, so the, expo the exposure to the nature uh, that benefits in well-being. So the, we have this stress reduction, the cognitive function, and increased productivity. So it is involves the materials, the natural materials, the indoor plants view of nature, and all the use of natural colors that colors and pattern use. So we have the acoustics. Sound of a noise, sound and noise levels within a space can have a significant impact on well-being. Interior design can address acoustic by incorporating sound-absorbing materials, proper special planning to reduce sound transmission, and a strategic placement of the furniture and object objects to minimize noise reverberation, reverberation, 
A well-designed acoustic environment can promote concentration, relaxation, and overall comfort. So acoustic also uh, designed for the or to promote concentration or relaxation and comfort to have an impact on well-being. So that's all for the uh, the inter to the introduction to interior design and basic types of design. And that's all for today. Thank you.